Well, that does it for your news this morning. Now we're going to send it over to John and our Sunrise panel for What's Trending. John? Thank you, Joey. That's right. I am standing by with our Sunrise panel this morning. We've got all the originals back this morning. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> They're all back. Of course, that includes Martha Guzman, Natasha Herzig, and Jay Walker. Thank you all for joining us again this morning on this Thank election post-election uh, edition of, Sun, uh, of our What's Trending on Sunrise. So we're very excited about it. We want to get to our first topic right away because it's no secret now that President Obama has won the election. He was re-elected again this week. And now that he has been re-elected, my first question to you all is, I mean, what do you think are the issues he needs to address the most? Whether you're a Democrat, Republican, he's our president now. What are the issues do you feel are the ones he needs to address the most. I guess I can start since I'm the closest to you. Mm -hmm. And I, I think everyone can agree, regardless of what your party is or who you um, were rooting for, um, the economy, jobs, jobs. Let's keep it, get people working again. Everyone's talking about the fiscal cliff. What are we going to do about our deficit? So I would say economy, jobs, uh, foreign policy, and immigration reform. That's what I would say off the top. All right. I, I, I'm sorry. I apologize. Uh, you know what? Uh, I think the biggest issue we have right now is getting some trust back in, in the country. Uh, I believe that obviously uh, he's elected our president by not only the electoral college but by the popular vote, uh, albeit not, not a whole lot, but he did win and that's the bottom line. But that also means that uh, over half the, or half the country, just under half the country, didn't want him as president. So he's going to have to get the, you know, that, so our country's divided in a sense. Even though he is our president, we should support him in, in the best that we can. We should respect the office of the president. Uh, he, he, there's a, a lot of people out there that don't want him as a president. That, I think that's going to be a big battle for him is to get, the, that's the biggest issue. And when we all know that politicians aren't always the most honest people around. And, uh, and I'm not going to go deep into it, but just when the biggest problem to me right now is the whole Benghazi. Uh, and he straight up to the American people lied to our face yes. about it. People died because of his watch. And it's going to be a hard time, for, a long time before people can either A, forgive him or forget about it. And I hope they don't forget about it. Okay. I will say this, that in the past four years, there is nothing bipartisan that President Obama has done. He purposely would not put things through Congress because the majority is Republican and they would not agree with them 100%. Therefore, there is no reason why he will be bipartisan now. He has nothing to lose. He's not getting reelected. The economy, the taxes, the, the fact that he wants to raise tax, taxes for those who make $250,000, that's not rich. That's a little more than sustaining a household nowadays. Are you kidding me? We're now, thanks to f approximately 52% of the country who benefits from some type of program that President Obama has passed, we're now going to have higher debt higher, and higher unemployment. Well, I disagree. I think he's already shown signs of reaching across the aisle and, you know, reached over to John Boehner. I think, you know, we have to work together. Just like when they, um, after Superstorm Sandy, you know, um, Governor Christie and Obama came together because it's an urgent need. I mean, we can't wait on this. Right. So now it's not just on Obama. It's on the Republican Party. It's on the Democrat Party. We need to come together to fix, you know, the situation, get jobs, get people working, and create that trust again. So I don't think that he's going to not work with the um, the other um, side. I think it's time to work together and get things done for this country and move forward in the next four years. Four years later. Well, four no. years later. He had his chance. That's what he did. The bottom line is, is he, he said from the start uh, that he had coming out, from, out of Bush, he had a hard road, road to toll. Look at the road he's going to have now. After the, the, the past four years, his road is 50 times harder than it was when he started. So we're in, he, he's got a lot of work ahead. But I'm of optimistic in the American people, and yes. I think that we are going to work for, um, move forward um, to you know, progress yeah, in this I, country. Yeah, I think at this point, that's what we have to do is just come together and unite. And I know that, you know, all the blame is also on President Obama, but there was a lot of Republicans that were refusing to work with him as well. So I think on both sides, they both need to just come to uh, maybe an agreement of some sort. I mean, they do need to come to an agreement. For of the sort. American people, exactly. they need to work together. To I mean, move forward. Because so. right now we're just the states of America. We're not really the United States exactly. of America. Exactly. What happened to United? So we'll, we'll definitely have to see what happens in months to come because I think it's certainly going to be interesting to see how everything shapes out, including with the House and the Senate votes being how they are now. So we'll definitely keep our eye on it, folks, but stay with us. We have two more topics that are coming up, including the long lines many voters endured at the 
voting centers, especially here in Yuma County and across the country. And also we are going to be talking about Proposition 204 here in Arizona, which was aimed to funding education and it failed. So we'll be back with those topics. But first, here's what's coming up on today. All right, welcome back, everyone. We're here with our post-election edition of What's Trending. I'm joined with all our Sunrise panelists right now. We're on topic two this morning, which, of course, were the long lines seen around the country, not just here in Yuma County. I mean, this was happening everywhere, long voting lines. But here in Yuma County, we experienced some of those same problems you can see right there on the video. Those were the long lines at some of the voting centers here. Now, of course, there were some problems with machines malfunctioning, printers, running out of ink, there was a lot of stuff going on. I mean, my question to you guys is, what do you think needs to be done to ensure these problems don't happen in the le next election? And do you feel that our county handled them appropriately? Well, I, from what I know, the, the machines were tested. They were tested the day before. Mm -hmm. How do you, you know, prevent the technical difficulties from happening? I mean, they happen here on TV, and you guys are on the air every day. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, what can they do? You know, they did expect, a, they didn't expect, I think, the numbers that came out. And it's unfortunate because we always complain about voter apathy. And so here you have this major election, and people are excited to go out to the polls, and then they have to deal with this. Mm -hmm. so let's hope that next time uh, they're willing to endure the long lines. You know, and I have to commend everyone who stayed in those long lines here locally and across the country to voice, to get their voice out. Um, it's unfortunate that it happened. You know, I, I, I really hope they can work the kinks out as far as I know they're going to be dealing, you know, talking to consultants mm -hmm. to make sure this doesn't happen again. It should not happen again. It shouldn't have happened this time. Yeah. It did. Let's get it fixed for next time. Yeah. Well, you know, how about, how about having, first of all, having possible, I have two theories here. One, uh, let's have more places to vote, yeah. which would make the line shorter because there'd be, I understand that that's volunteer, we need more help, but uh, something tells me. Or what about more machines? I mean, at one of the <clears throat> voting well, centers I went to, they had four oh voting goodness. machines. Well, that's my second thought. I, 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 I personally, I'm not a conspiracy theorist guy, but at the same time, I, I am one of these guys that always say that I believe that technology is going to be the death of us. And with all the computer hackers and all the things that there are today, I'm very surprised that we're actually using computers to do the printing, bring back the chads, man. Yeah. Let's let's, yeah. let's make it. It'd be, it's faster. It's uh, and in my opinion, I believe it's more accurate because when we're sitting there waiting and waiting and waiting in line, and and the computers are breaking down, paper never breaks down. Yeah. Punching yeah. a hole in something never breaks down. Perfect that. The fact that we were not as prepared as we should have been, knowing how important this election was, is is beyond my comprehension. There should have been more polling places, more machines just on standby in case one does break, you just swap it with another. I just, I can't believe there wasn't just more people being prepared for something like this. I, you know, of course no one wants to stand in the long line, but from what I hear is people were okay standing in that line mm -hmm. because of what it represented mm -hmm. and how important it was as an American to, to to have their vote heard. Absolutely, and I know that you three all avoided those long lines because yeah, here's yeah. another solution, folks. Maybe next time, early voting. Yes. That's a, you all three did yeah. that. Early so. ballot, yeah. You yeah, need to get more ballot. passionate. You're so. just not passionate. <laughs> <laughs> early ballot voting. So, I mean, I went in and I they actually had the option of paper or machine where I oh. went, so I did paper. Yeah. It was a lot faster. Good. It was quicker. So I'm with Jay on that one. Maybe bring back the paper. The Chad. Yeah, yeah the Chad. that would happen Chads. in Florida with the Chad. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Got to be careful, exactly. Yeah. All right, well, our next topic is Proposition 204, which was uh, expanding the yeah. one-cent sales tax here in Arizona. Now, of course, they're saying that 80% of it would have went to education. The other 20%, they're saying, would have gone to special projects, such as construction, highways, other things like that. Um, so, I mean, with education being such a big deal here in Arizona, why do you think this proposition failed? I mean, many voters voted against it. And do you think the Arizona legislature will bring a solution to fund the state's education after this failed? I know why it failed. Because I know all... No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> There, there was no sunset date on it. There was yeah. absolutely no end. Americans should uh, should never be taxed for something that there is no end to. Definitely. Even the city itself, when, when they uh, have taxes, I mean, it may be 15 years before it's up again and we have to revote on it, but there should never be ever a tax that has no end date. It's just forever. Something happened, you know, we go to dirt roads and stuff, you know, there's still that tax. We may not be yeah. spending any money on the roads, but we still are going to get taxed. Exactly. There needed to be a sunset date on it. There wasn't, and personally, I think that's the think that's biggest why. reason it, it failed. It 
it failed because there was no control in terms of where it was going once it got to the school. Mm -hmm. And you don't know, it's just basically a blank check. Here you go. You don't know if it's going just to administration. It's no guarantee that it's going to the classroom. It wasn't going to the teachers. And it's an indefinite tax. Even so if you there feel was it a, needed to be more specific. Yes. Absolutely. Who, Democrats and Republicans, like, who wants to see a school system fail? Mm. Nobody does. Right. We, I don't know anybody who wouldn't have voted for it if it would have been some type of specific direction of where that money was being allocated. But because it was just basically a blank check, I'm not for that. I want to know where my money's going. Mm -hmm. And it's an indefinite tax, which means even once we reached a surplus, I'm still paying taxes on top of yep. that. And I would have to go with what you're saying. Um, you know, we can all agree that education is the key to our future, right. to the, the future of our state. Mm -hmm. uh, voters decided this was not the solution for them. Uh, perhaps, you know, we know we need to do something. Teachers um, are important. They're underpaid. We need resources in the classroom. Mm -hmm. uh, perhaps we uh, look at the solution as a local one. We, we propose a capital school bond, and we know the money is going to stay here yeah. locally. It's going to yeah. go for what our um, specific needs are. Mm -hmm. So what, do you think lawmakers what, will come with a solution? Yes. Well, they need to, uh -huh. like was, what Wisconsin did. Uh -huh. they, took the, they took the power from the union and they gave it to the parents. Each district should be involved like, like they did back in the day where parents got together and said, listen, I don't like what's happening with our district. With our, t our teachers need to be paid more. We need to have a better education system and we will pay higher taxes. You, what do you mean? Your parents getting involved with the school? That, that, that's going to happen? <laughs> yes. Oh, geez. <laughs> what a novel idea. I know, uh, right? Geez. Actually being a parent? Wow. I want to cut you guys off right there. <laughs> but uh, thank you guys so much again for joining us. Thank on you our for Sunrise having panel. me. This is post-election, so maybe we'll get more into the celebrity gossip and stuff next time <laughs> but it is a political oh, year so we do have to stay into the politics folks but whether you agree with them or not uh, we would be interested to hear your views go ahead and uh chime in on our facebook page that's kyma tv and we'd love to hear what you think